This video is on development accounting. If you've seen the video on growth accounting before, the two are very closely related. Development accounting is actually the decomposition of international income differences into the differences that are explained by differences in accumulable production factors, physical capital, labor, and into productivity differences, while growth accounting decomposes the growth rate of one country over time into the contributions of the different uh, factors in the production function. Therefore, the questions that we are interested in are now slightly different as compared to growth accounting, because what we want to answer now are um, how we can decompose cross-country income differences in the levels into the contributions of productivity on the one hand and accumulable inputs in rival production factors such as physical capital, human capital and raw labor on the other. So that's more the cross-country perspective instead of the perspective over time. And the second question, how we can derive a measure for productivity differences across countries based on this method. Again, we can depict the intuition behind development accounting graphically. And now in contrast to growth accounting, we don't observe one country over time, but we observe more countries and compare them to each other. So if we start with country one, say, and country one has um, the rival accumulable input factors, human capital and physical capital here of this level, then we can read off um, at the production function, basically here, the level of per capita GDP. Now we have a second country, and the second country faces the same production function here, in this assumption here, uh, but different levels of human capital and physical capital, say this level here. So then the country two would have a higher uh, per capita GDP, Y2, but the two countries would lie on the same production function because the technology that they face is the same and their productivity levels are the same. Now, however, we could also have this situation where countries one and two have the same levels of accumulable production factors, H and K, but different productivity levels. Then the two countries would not be on the same production function, but they would have different production functions because the productivity level, the higher productivity level of country two would shift its production function counterclockwise, basically, and its level of, product, uh, of output per capita would be Y2, so higher as the uh, output level of uh, country one, uh, although in this case they face the same levels of uh, inputs in terms of human capital and physical capital. Again, in reality, we would actually face both cross-country differences. So the two countries would differ in terms of their productivity and in terms of the uh, levels of uh, production inputs that they use so that we have basically a difference in per capita GDP between the two countries that can be decomposed into differences that are due to differences in accumulable production factors. So that would be about here, this level. So that can be explained by differences in production factors. And this difference here can be explained by differences in productivity. So development accounting is all about disentangling these differences. Now we look again at the math behind development accounting after having described it from an intuitive perspective. We assume again that we have a Cobb Douglas production function with productivity as a multiplier of the production factor. So we do not have uh, labor augmenting technological progress here, but uh, technology or productivity in this case, which comprises more than only technology, is a shift of the production function. Again, capital is uh, physical capital, has an output elasticity of alpha. Then we have human capital here, which is the product of individual human capital or average human capital. So that's the human capital of one person or the average person in the economy. And we multiply that by the number of workers that are employed in the economy. And that has an output elasticity of one minus alpha. Now, if we divide this expression by L, we get per capita GDP. And we know this, we have done this also in other courses. Uh, if we divide this here, L to the power of one minus alpha drops out here and we have one L to the power of alpha in the denominator left, and we can uh, put this together with physical capital so that we have capital intensity, capital per worker here, and then um, labor does not appear anymore on the right-hand side of this production function. Now we just need to assume that there are two countries, country one and country two, each facing 
such a production function and each potentially having different levels of productivity, capital per worker and human capital per worker. Then we can take the ratio of their per capita GDPs as it is done here. And we see that this ratio can actually be decomposed into the ratio of productivity here and the ratio of the part of the uh, production function where the differences can be explained by differences in the accumulable production factors, capital and uh, human capital. Now again, we would assume an empirically plausible value for alpha, which is one third as the long run average for the United States until the 1970s, 1980s. And just for the sake of the argument, we now assume that country one has twice the productivity level of country two and four times the physical capital intensity and the human capital per capita. So then we can just plug in for country one, uh, we normalize it to one and for, uh, for country two, we normalize it to one and for country one, we plug in uh, two here and four here. Then we would get to this expression and we would see if we solve everything that actually country one would have a GDP per capita that is eight times as high as GDP per capita in country two. So that was again a very simple example of how we can decompose cross-country income differences now into the differences of the production factors. However, as in growth accounting, if you've seen this video before, in development accounting, it's the same that we can actually observe pretty much the cross-country income differences. So it's not that what we want to compute. We can also observe the cross-country differences in physical capital and human capital. But what we cannot observe is the difference in productivity across countries. What we can do, however, is to isolate the productivity difference on the left-hand side of the equation and compute it as the difference between per capita GDP across the countries and the part of this difference that can be explained by the differences across the two countries in the accumulable rival production factors determined by physical capital and human capital. So if we use, again, the same numbers as before, we plug in the cross-country income difference that we observed, which was eight, so that we assume now, but we assume we don't know the cross-country productivity differences, and we plug in the differences that we know here, so the factor of four. If we plug this in, we have eight here. If we compute that, we have four, and in the end, we know that the cross-country productivity differences have to be by a factor of two between the two countries. And that means we have used this development accounting type of methodology to derive a measure now of productivity differences across countries. If you do such an exercise, what you will typically find out is again, that a large part of cross-country income differences can be explained by such productivity differences. And these productivity differences, again, comprise a lot of different aspects. So they could be technological differences, that the two countries have access to different uh, technologies, for example, because a new technology is only available in country one and patented. But it could also be differences in institutions, in corruption, in the number of holidays per year, and so on and so forth. So there could be a lot of differences that all um, map into such productivity differences across countries.